All right, welcome to today's show. Today on the Cabela's Saltwater Series, we're going to be in Rockport, Texas for the Cabela's Redfish Series. Now, this is the third stop of our 2011 season. We're looking for big fish right now. They're in schools. A lot of teams are going to be fishing in these schools. Then later, we're going to jump in the boat and head out with the crew from Wade Wright Wading Gear. As you can see, I am decked out, ready for battle. We're going to head out to a local reef just outside of Port Aransas, see if we can find some flounder. Y'all stay tuned. We'll see if we can get them. Welcome to the Cabela's Saltwater Series Fishing Show, home of some of the hottest fishing action on the coast. With your hosts, Scott Simmons and Jim Elrod. Join us as we cover the Cabela's Redfish Series tournaments and fish with some of the top saltwater anglers. The Saltwater Series is sponsored by Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitters. Mayak Boats, leaving the competition behind. Cresta's Boats and Motors, Port Aransas Chamber of Commerce, the Brazos Sport Convention and Visitors Council, Evan Rood E-Tech, Laguna Rod, Wade Wright, Power Pole, Tejano Salsa, and these fine sponsors. Let's go over the rules of the Cabela's Redfish Series. There are one-day tournaments. Two-person teams may fish. There's a two live redfish weigh-in. Teams must use artificial lures. Wade fishing is allowed. The Redfish Series qualifies for the Cabela's Angler's Cash Rewards Program. There are four stops on the tour. Each stop has a $10,000 first place prize. Teams are competing for the coveted Sharkskin Grips and Justin Boots Team of the Year Award. Kill switch. Check. Live jacket. Check. Power pole. Check. Redfish. Check. 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 You know, you remember the good times. This is something I want him to remember, and uh, that he'll always remember the tournament that he did so well in, his first tournament, and that he'll be able to cherish that, maybe pass that on to his next generation, and uh, you know, letting him see what competition is about, and camaraderie. There's a lot of camaraderie with this, and uh, it's fun. And it's, it's, uh, it's important to have that type of relationship with your uh, father-son. So that's what's, uh, that's, I'm hoping to instill that in him, because my dad instilled that in me. Well, the one he caught looks like I haven't measured the weight that I just wanted to get him in the uh, box and get him oxygen on him and take care of him. But I think he's gonna go 26 to 27 inches, and he's a fine red to start out with on tough conditions, windy and stormy, and uh, 
Hey, what can I say? He's got his dad put to shame right oh, now. He's, he's something. He's, he's quite the guy. He's a good fisherman and uh, always seems to have a knack to produce fish when things are tough. And I told him this was going to be, you know, a tough tournament with a lot of good competition in it. And uh, the conditions really ruined our original plans, what we wanted to do, and that was run and gun schools. But the, uh, the storms just got pretty 35, 40 mile an hour winds and a lot of rain. And those pods we did see were too small to even work with. So uh, we came into the little area here that I know always, you know, usually has a few reds in it, and it did. And I believe the barometer falling uh, today on that storm when it was raining, the barometer moving down helped us, uh, even though it was raining. And Earl capitalized, got him a nice red for the tournament, and his dad just got one too big. So he's putting, putting pressure on his dad to produce. And uh, I don't know if I can work under this kind of pressure or not. <laughs> Boat, I, I didn't realize it at first, and I felt some tug. I thought it was probably all the seaweed or something, but sure enough, it was right at the boat, about right in that area right there. Um, Dad says he's about 26, 27 inches, probably around six, seven pounds. Felt good. Right, we're probably going to vacate this area uh, and let them have it because it's going to it's going to just put there's too much pressure on it. You know, we uh, we were on on that little group of fish, but they didn't hang around. There was just too many boats in here on it, and uh, I think right now we it might be best to, for our advantage to to move on after this little drift here. We're going to try to get one more. Uh, we still have another, oh, 150, 200 yards left on our drift, and then we'll move on. Come on, redfish. Show up. this boat over there, Earl, the boat anchor. Get on this side of it. Hey, <laughs> over there, cast over there. back later, it's not that big of a red. They're right there. They're cut, they're between us and this boat. That guy's gonna run them right to us. See them in the water, the red. Cast long that way, Earl. Long toward that boat. Look, long toward that boat, hurry. Long. You're on him. He's gonna circle. Okay, Earl. Here we are, right here. Cast, Earl, Earl. Cast straight down, right there, see him? Get him.
black drum. Whole school of them. Been all in all, I can't ask for any more. My son put on the board first and he let dear old dad get another one. So I can't complain. Let's head over to the weigh-in and see which team is going to take home our $10,000 first place prize. Thirteen point eight one on those fish. Thirteen eight one. Oh. This is Bill Shike and his son Earl Shike. Earl's first tournament, man. You have fun? Yeah, fun. Was Tony nice to you? Yeah. All right, just check it. Here we go. Let's look at these fish. Eleven point four one pounds, gentlemen. Eleven point four one. How about that? Double digits on his first tournament. There you go. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Father and son out there making it happen. And that's the difference. My God. Richard Gidry and Sam Kellum. Look at that. Girl, how was it? It was pretty fun. Um, it was kind of good weather, and, but once we started getting out there about 45 minutes in, we started getting a big old storm in, and um, the rain was hitting us hard. But I finally got it, um, that one fish during the storm, so that was good. There you go, there's your Cabela's Angler's Cash winner for this stuff. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, Pink Showwater. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. They're getting younger. I don't know what to tell you. Well, we designed the Wade Wright to, to be a belt, but without being a belt. Uh, fishermen like to carry gear, especially when they're wading. Uh, they get away from the boat and they, you know, if you, if you get broken off or you've got to change lures, you know, you can't carry everything in all bodies of water. Sometimes what you wear around your waist is, is underwater. So we designed the Wade Wright to bring everything up off the waist and up to the chest and shoulder level, starting with the rod with the reel in the back at the shoulder height. And then we wanted to outfit it with these one inch clips to allow an angler to customize what they want, whatever they want to carry. For instance, I have a shoulder box that we, that we sell, double box. And then I have a rod tube in the front, my pliers of course up here. So everything is close to my chest. It's up out of the water. Uh, I know that if, if my chest is out of the water, I'm out of the water. And I know that if I need to handle a fish, if I need to retie, I've got a secure place I can put my fishing rod and know that it's not going to fall. I'm not going to dunk my reel. And uh, hopefully I'm just dunking lures that day.
Oh, there he is. Came back and got it. Not a bad little flounder. Made it real easy to take the hook out. Landed it with my landing net. Put my rod right here. Now I got two hands to handle the fish. If I was carrying a stringer today, I could stringer them up and not have to worry about the fish getting off or uh, not getting to go in the fish bucket today. I just like dragging it. a spoon across the bottom. Snagged up a nice little flounder. That'll eat good tonight. So, having a place to put your rod and get everything out of your way, deal with all this with two hands and not one, makes all the difference in the world. What's nice about all the gear is I can still work a lure. Not in my way, I don't have to fish around it. I know it's gonna be there, it's, it's fixed. It's a, a peace of mind almost to know that I've got a, a secure place to put my rod and reel and uh, kind of look at it like it's an insurance policy, insuring the, the life of my equipment. What you got there, Ned? I believe it's another flounder. Flounder? I didn't realize you're such a flounder fisherman. We, I didn't either. It's a good flounder too. I knew you're good at catching them. I'd have taken you to a different spot. I want you to catch on my flounder. <laughs> good flounder, man. Pretty little flounder. A little good eating size. We'll put him on. Uh, we'll put him on somebody's stringer for sure. Yeah, Tim had come up with a design that we took. Uh, to the Houston fishing show and we had success with it and uh, through our tinkering and deciding what we could go from there we came up with uh, the choice model which allowed you to have all the accessories and uh, that's where we really put our heads together and came up with the product that you see right now and uh, it allows you to carry what you want when you want. First one he made I think he actually had it sewed together at a shoe shop <laughs> And uh, he shows up wearing this thing, and it 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 doesn't it remotely resembles what we have now. And he's wearing this, and he's got enough gear on the front of it that it looks like something from Terminator. And uh, I was like, man, you got to be kidding me. And uh, then uh, he started telling me about it and why he made it, and it was mainly to keep your rod out of the water. And that trip is when I dunked one of my reels, and that was the last time I dunked a reel. We made one after that for me, and right where you're standing is about where we've been are. making them ever since. Right where you are. Oh, there you go. Um. Oh yeah. 
Good flounder. See, you give them the net, let out a little line, stop the rod tube in. Now I got two hands to mess with the fish. Always nice having two hands to mess with a fish. Not a bad mess of fish. Closed captioning provided by Wade Ride by Coastal Fishing Gear. If you would like to find out more information about the Cabela's Saltwater Series tournaments, including the Cabela's Redfish Series, Redfish Anglers Association Tour, Mayak Owners Tournament, or Texas Kids Series, visit www.saltwaterseries.com or like.